Hello, fifth graders, and happy Monday. Today, we're going to take a chance to review for our Unit 5 test tomorrow. This is going to be all about volume and area. I know you're going to do a great job, and so does Mr. Smiles. Let's dive right into our video. Let's start by talking about volume. Volume is the amount of space an object takes up, or the number of unit cubes that can be fit into that object. A unit cube is any cube with a length, width, and height of one unit. So if a cube had a length, width, and height of one inch, it would be a unit cube. To find volume, we need to count the unit cubes. To do this, we can find the length, the width, and the height to multiply. First, let's find the length by counting across one row on the bottom. What's the length of this shape? The length is five. Then I can find the width by counting the number of rows on the bottom. What's the width of this shape? The width is five. Then I can find the height by counting the number of layers. What's the height of this figure? The height is three. Now I can multiply to find the volume. First I'll multiply length times width. What's five times five? It's 25. Then I can multiply by the height. What's 25 times three? It's 75. The volume of this figure is 75 cubic units. Let's do another one together. Remember, I can count the length, the width, and the height, and multiply. What's the length of this shape? The length is 2. What's the width of this shape? The width is 5. What's the height of this shape? The height is 5. Now I can multiply to find the volume. What's 2 times 5? 2 times 5 is 10. What's 10 times 5? It's 50. So the volume is 50 cubic units. Now you try to on your own. Take a look at the first one on the left. What's the volume of that figure? Go ahead and find it now. The volume is 100 cubic units. The length is 5, the width is 5, and the height is 4. When I multiply the length times the width, 5 times 5 is 25. When I multiply by the height, 25 times 4 is 100. Now find the volume of the figure to the right. Go ahead and do that now. The volume is 64 cubic units. The length is 4, the width is 4, and the height is 4. When I multiply 4 times 4, I get 16. 16 times 4 is 64. We also found volume using the volume formula. Remember, the formula for volume is length times width times height. So to find the volume of any rectangular prism, I simply need to multiply the length times the width times the height. Let's take a look at the first example. A rectangular prism has a length of 3 feet, a width of 6 feet, and a height of 5 feet. What is the volume? Well, I know that the length is 3, the width is 6, and the height is 5. I can multiply the length times the width first. What's 3 times 6? 3 times 6 is 18. Now I can multiply by the height. What's 18? times 5. 18 times 5 is 90. The answer is 90 cubic feet. Now you try one. A rectangular prism has a length of 4 feet, a width of 5 feet, and a height of 8 feet. What is the volume? Go ahead and find it now. The answer is 160 cubic feet. When I multiply the length times the width, 4 times 5 is 20. When I multiply by the height of 8, 20 times 8 is 160. Now let's try a few more. What is the volume of the figure on the top left? Well, first, what's the length? The length is 6. What's the width? The width is 2. What's the height? The height is 3. Now I can multiply length times width times height to find the volume. When I multiply length times width, 
What's 6 times 2? 6 times 2 is 12. When I multiply times 3, what's the volume? It's 36 cubic yards. Let's do another. Take a look at the next figure on the top right. What's the length? The length is 14. The width is 3, even though it's in kind of a strange place. And the height is 9. When I multiply length times width, what's 14 times 3? Well, 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 1 plus 1 more is 4. Now I can multiply 42 times 9 to find the volume. What's the volume? Well, 9 times 2 is 18. 9 times 4 is 36 plus 1 more is 37. So the volume is 378 cubic inches. Now you try a couple. Look at the bottom left. What's the volume of that figure? Go ahead and find it now. The length is 5, the width is 9, and the height is 4. When I multiply 5 times 9, I get 45. I can multiply that times the height of 4. 45 times 4 is 180, so the volume is 180 cubic inches. Now try the problem on the bottom right. What's the volume of that figure? The volume is 616 yards cubed. The length is 11, the width is 8, and the height is 7. When I multiply length times width, 11 times 8 is 88. When I multiply that by 7, I get 616. So the volume is 616 cubic yards. We also talked about how to find missing dimensions. Remember, when we're looking for missing dimensions, we can multiply by every answer choice to see which one works. Take a look at the first example. The volume of the figure below is 90 cubic centimeters. What is the height? That means when I multiply length times width times height, I'll get 90. I already know the length and width. So 3 times 6 times something equals 90. Or 18 times something equals 90. So let's do it for every answer choice. 3 times 6. What's 3 times 6? It's 18. Now I can multiply by 2 to see if A is correct. What's 18 times 2? It's 36. Is A a correct answer? No, it is not. Let's try B. 3 times 6 is still 18. What's 18 times 3? It's 54. Is B a correct answer? No, it is not. Let's try C. 3 times 6 is still 18. What's 18 times 4? 18 times 4 is 72. Is C a correct answer? No. Let's try D. 3 times 6 is still 18. What's 18 times 5? 18 times 5 is 90. Is D a correct answer? Yes. D is the missing dimension. Now you try one on your own. The volume of the figure below is 72 cubic inches. What is the height? Go ahead and try that problem now. The correct answer is C. 3 times 4 is 12. When I try A, 12 times 2 is 24. That's not correct. When I try B, 12 times 4 is 48. That's also not correct. When I try C, 12 times 6 is 72. That's not correct. That is correct. When I try D, 12 times 8 is 96. That's not correct. The only correct answer choice is C. We may also be missing all three of our dimensions. Look at this problem. The volume of a rectangular prism is 60 cubic inches. Which could be the dimensions? I can see that several lengths, widths, and heights are listed. Go ahead and break your workspace into six boxes, one for each answer choice. Now let's start with A. The length is 5 inches and the width is 2. What's 5 times 2? It's 10. Now I can multiply times the height. What's 10 times 6? It's 60. Is A a correct answer? 
Yes, it is. Let's try B. The length is 8 and the width is 3. What's 8 times 3? 8 times 3 is 24. Now I can multiply times the height. What's 24 times 3? It's 72. Is B a correct answer? No, it is not. Let's try C. The length is 6 and the width is 3. What's 6 times 3? It's 18. Now I can multiply times the height of 4. What's 18 times 4? It's 72. Is C a correct answer? No, it is not. Let's try D. The length is 10 and the width is 2. What's 10 times 2? 10 times 2 is 20. Now I can multiply times the height of 3. What's 20 times 3? 20 times 3 is 60. Is D a correct answer? Yes, it is. Let's try another. Let's look at E. The length is 4 and the width is 3. What's 4 times 3? It's 12. Now I can multiply times the height. What's 12 times 5? It's 60. Is E a correct answer? Yes, it is. Let's try F. The length is 7 and the width is 2. What's 7 times 2? It's 14. Now I can multiply times the height of 4. What's 14 times 4? It's 56. Is F a correct answer? No, it is not. So the correct answers are A, D, and E. I had to try all of them. Go ahead and separate your workspace for the next problem. Now you try it. Which answer choices are correct for a rectangular prism with a volume of 72 cubic inches? The correct answers are B, C, and F. The volume for answer choice A was 84. The volume for answer choice D was 90. And the volume for answer choice E was 96. None of those are correct. Remember, when you have missing dimensions, try every answer choice. We also talked about how volume is additive, meaning that you can add two smaller volumes of smaller prisms to find the total volume of a larger prism. If we know both parts, we can add to find the total. If we know the whole in one part, we can subtract to find the other part. Let's look at a few examples. James has a swimming pool. It is made of two sections. The volume of one section is 78 cubic feet, and the volume of the other section is 68 cubic feet. What is the volume of the pool? Here, I know both parts. I need to put them together to find the total volume. What's 78 plus 68? Well, 8 plus 8 is 16. 1 plus 7 is 8. Plus 6 is 146 cubic feet. Now you try a similar problem. Alex has a living room with two sections. The volume of the first section is 152 cubic meters. The volume of the second section is 387 cubic meters. What is the volume of the living room? Go ahead and solve that problem now. The volume is 539 cubic meters. I know both sections, so I have to add to find the total volume. Sometimes we'll be given the total and one of the parts. Let's look at an example. Kyle has a pool with two sections. The volume of the pool is 160 cubic feet. If the first section has a volume of 78 cubic feet, what is the volume of the second section? Here I know the total and one of the parts, and I need to find the other part. So I need to subtract 160 minus 78. Go ahead and do that now. What's 160 minus 78? The correct answer is 82 cubic feet. Now you try one. Max has a living room with two sections. The volume of the living room is 450 cubic meters. If the volume of the first section is 215 cubic meters, what is the volume of the second section? Go ahead and solve that problem now. The volume of the second section is 235 cubic meters. I know the whole and I know one of the parts, so I need to subtract to find the other part. Now try two on your own. 
Peter was building a dresser. It had two parts. The volume of one part was 56 cubic inches, and the volume of the other part was 88 cubic inches. What was the volume of the dresser? Go ahead and solve that problem now. Here I know both parts, and I need to add to find the whole. The answer is 144 cubic inches. Try another. Naomi had a swimming pool that had two sections. The volume of the pool was 280 cubic feet. The first section had a volume of 162 cubic feet. What was the volume of the second section? Go ahead and solve that problem now. The correct answer is 118 cubic feet. Here we knew the total and we knew one of the parts. We had to subtract to find the other part. The last skill we talked about was area. Remember, to find area, multiply length times width. So let's start with an example. What is the area of a rug with a length of three and one half feet and a width of six feet? So I need to multiply three and one half times six. Remember, when I have a mixed number, the first thing I need to do is change it to an improper fraction. How do I write three and one half as an improper fraction? Well, three times two is six, plus one more is seven over two times 6. Now I can multiply. What's 7 over 2 times 6 written as an improper fraction? It's 42 over 2. My last step is to divide to change that into a whole number or mixed number. What's 42 divided by 2 written as a whole number? Go ahead and solve that problem now. Well, 2 goes into 4 twice and 2 goes into 2 once. So the correct answer is 21 square feet. Try another. What is the area of a banner with a width of 3 fourths feet and a length of 14 feet? I need to multiply 3 fourths times 14. What's 3 fourths times 14 written as an improper fraction? It's 42 over 4. It's 42 over 4. Now I need to divide to change that to a mixed number. When I divide 42 divided by 4, what's the result as a mixed number? It's 10 and 2 fourths. That answer is not quite done. I need to simplify. What number goes into both 2 and 4? 2 goes into both. When I divide 2 fourths by 2 and by 2, what's my simplified fraction? It's 1 half. So the correct answer is 10 and 1 half feet squared. We also found area with fractional side lengths. What is the area of a rug with a length of 2 fifths yards and a width of 1 half yard? Well, I can multiply. What's 2 fifths times 1 half? It's 2 tenths. That answer choice is not available. Whenever my answer isn't there, I need to simplify. What's the largest number that goes into both 2 and 10? It's 2. When I divide both by 2, what's my simplified fraction? It's 1 fifth. So the correct answer is C. Now you try the last question. What is the area of a rug with a length of 3 eighths yard and a width of 1 third yard? Go ahead and solve that problem now. Don't forget to simplify if your answer is not there. The correct answer is D. 3 eighths times 1 third is 3 over 24. The largest number that goes into both is 3. So I can divide 3 and 24 by 3. The result is 1 eighth. You've done a great job on this video. Now choose IXL skill EE4, EE10, or EE11.